QuickBooks Online 2022 Budgeted Income Statement Data Input. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We set up with a 30-day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the 125% currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. And the business view as to the accounting view if you want to change to the accounting view it's something you can do by going to the cog up top switch to accounting view down below we will be toggling back and forth between the two views either here or by jumping to the sample company file currently in the accounting view back to the get great guitars we're going to open up a couple tabs to put reports in going to the tab up top to do so right clicking on it and duplicating it back to the tab to the left right clicking on it again duplicating it again as that is thinking let's see where the reports are located in the accounting view in the sample company which is on the left hand side under reports back to the business view we're in the second tab now reports in the business view in the get great guitars file under the business overview and then reports but it's still thinking it's still thinking hold on a second we're going to close up the hamburger we're going to open up just the income statement this time the profit and loss the p and the l we're going to do the range change up top from 010122 to 022822 run it and then go to the tab to the right and we're going to then take a look at the business overview again go to the reports on the left hand side closing up the hamburger this time the trial balance the trusty tb by typing it in not the trail balance, but the trial balance. I before A. I before A. We're not going on a trail. We're not going hiking over here. 010122 on the range change. 022822 and run it. There we have it. Now, in prior presentations, we discussed that we're going to make a budget. When we make a budget, we don't typically think about actually creating the budget kind of inside of QuickBooks, but rather take the past data from QuickBooks, export it possibly to something like Excel, then use that to create the budget. So the budget also often being thought of as a profit and loss, in essence, being the major component of the budget, because that's the timing statement of what we expect to be happening in the future based on past information. So what we did then is we thought about the past information that has taken place in the last two months, the two months of data input we have in place is all we have for this company file, January and February. We exported it to Excel, but not in an income statement format, but rather on the trial balance because the trial balance doesn't have all the subtotals down here so that we can easily clean it up and just have a very basic income statement without all the subtotals in it. We exported it to Excel, cleaned it up so it looks like this, and then we projected out into the future starting out by taking those two months, kind of imagining that they were actually the prior two months, like December and November of the prior year, and then projecting them out to a monthly basis for 12 months as the starting point, taking these numbers, dividing by two, since this consists of two months, and then we, we went back into it and got a little bit more complex with our budget thinking about what changes might happen for things like people just getting recognition, advertising taking place, differences in our sales prices, and so on and so forth, differences in the economy and whatnot. Now we're gonna take this information that we have and put it back into QuickBooks to get back to what QuickBooks is good at. So we're gonna to go to the first tab to do that. And note that if you're a bookkeeper or something like that, this, this is where you the budget, if someone's asking you to do the budget, then it's something you got to say, hey, look, I got to work with the, the owner in order to do the budget because you're the one planning the company. I'm the one entering the data input to help you to plan. I provide the financial statement information. I can make a basic budget based on past history. But obviously, again, the budgeting thing takes into consideration the management of the company or the owner of a company. If it's a small company with an alignment in conjunction with the accounting department so the accounting department can provide the data and then also possibly help to format the budget and then get the budget back into the system so that we can then do budget reports, budget versus actual reports as time passes being one of the main reports we will use. So to enter the budget now, going into the cog up top at the first tab and we're in the tools area, we're gonna go down to the budgeting. 
budgeting and then we're just gonna add a budget so we can add multiple budgets we're gonna add the budget here and we're gonna say this we can call it budget number one budget one I'll just call it and it's gonna be for the fiscal year let's say this is gonna be for 2022 fiscal year let's run that and then uh, you got the interval on months so you could run it monthly you could do a quarterly budget if you want to see it on a quarterly basis and you can see obviously that the items below changing as we go through these you could do a yearly budget most common most likely would be the monthly budget so you could track this information on a month by month breakout now you could experiment with the pre-fill data like the 2022 data for example or you could take like the 2021 which would be common taking the prior year data to as your starting point going forward but again that's just a real basic starting point so if someone did ask you for a budget and you're like uh you're the accountant and they want a budget well that's what you would do you would take the prior year data and say i'm just going to make a budget you could do that quite easily but it's not a very detailed budget at that point so we're, what we're going to do is say we don't want any of the data because uh we want a fresh starting point and put in what we put in place with excel uh and then it says uh, subdivide don't subdivide or uh, customer i'm not going to subdivide here so we're going to say next and so now we've got our data input fields and we can these are a little bit funny the way they kind of move around but not too bad so we can put this data in the system now so this will be a bit tedious with it's a lot easier with two screens so i'm going to actually go through this one by one so we've got the billable items up to 1000 or 100 billable now if we just copy it across that makes it nice and easy i could just basically copy it across and there we have it we don't have the, the other kind of formats that are as as nice to like multiply it across or something like that in the online version they do in the desktop version so i kind of wish they would pick that up in the online but in any case i'm going to say that that one is done i'll make it green for it being done let's mark it off as green here and then we got the equipment is 1130. Let's see if we could find the equipment there. 1130, 1130. Now this one, we're gonna say that it's going to increase by that 10%. And notice again, it would be nice if I could take the prior cell over here and then multiply it times the 10%. They don't really give us that option. So I'm gonna actually have to fill this in manually and say, okay, that means that this is gonna be 1187 about, there is a rounding involved, 1187 tab, and then go and say, okay, the next one is 1246. This is a lot easier with two screens. 12246 and so on and so forth. I'll jump forward. So now I've entered it for the whole thing here. And so you got the totals at the 17988 which ties out pretty close here. It's gonna be off by rounding because I've got pennies, 17, 9, 8, 8. So that looks pretty close. So I'm gonna say good enough for the budget. Sales of product income, 29,226. So sale of product is gonna be down here. I'm gonna skip a few, 29,226. Now note, QuickBooks is gonna have all these other accounts involved here because remember, they, they had that huge chart of accounts that we didn't really clear out. So you're gonna have all these other accounts that we kind of have to deal with as we go through. And so that's why it's kind of nice to, one reason it's kind of nice to clean out the chart of accounts for those accounts you're not using if you're gonna be budgeting here. Uh, 32,148, so we gotta do the same thing because it's not the same. 32,148, so I'm gonna copy this across. So all, the whole way, same kind of idea. So after copying that across, we got the we got the six uh, twenty four nine nine six according to my table here. So we just enter these one by one from the table, these numbers here, and then I'm going to make that uh, green. Next one is the services, which we increased by a thousand. That'll be a little bit easier to do. Uh, Four thousand one fifty is our data input. So this is going to be the service items, right? That's what I said it was, isn't it? Service four thousand one fifty. 4150 and then I just increased those by a thousand so 5150 tab tab 6150 right that's the trend I got here going yeah so I'm gonna say 77150 and then 8150 9150 and then 10150 and then 11150 and then 12150 and then 13150, and then 14150, and finally 151550, getting us to the 1158. 
and the total does that tie out to what we've got here one one five eight it does in deed it does indeed and that's what counts the deeds the deeds done and it ties out 22977 22977 cost of goods sold the expenses by the way should be a lot easier because uh, we're just going to copy those across most likely so the so what am i on i'm on the cost of goods sold so we've got all these other accounts for the income and then they got other income up top and then the cost to get sold which i'm just going to put into this line item just for the cost to get sold they got sub accounts for the cost to get sold i just want the cost to get sold that's it 22977 starting point 22977 this one changes as we go across through i think it increased by 10 percent. so i gotta do it one by one so I'll, I'll do that myself so on the second one we've got the 2025 25 275 and then I'll keep on going across so the total here on our worksheet is is going to be the 491347 we entered these just one by one in and so that's going to be the total 491347 I believe is good so let's go back to the worksheet then again make this green so now we've got the bank fees 18 this is going to be all the way across so I just got to find those bank feeds and it's kind of funny this one kind of hangs around there which is a little annoying but whatever so i'm looking for the bank feeds which is there they are they're under the general so i'm going to say this down here is going to be the one eight so just 18 otherwise known as 18 <laughs> copy that across so nice and easy next one is the insurance which we did something funny for so let's find the insurance so the insurance, I think they had their own little subcategory for the insurance general. There it is. So I'm just going to put it here in the insurance. And then I said insurance, we're going to put in there on February and September 6,000. So February 6,000 and then September 6,000. So there we have that. So these two are that insurance is done. And then we've got the internet expense 90 across internet expense. Where did we put that one? Where is it located? There it is. Internet expense. And now I forgot the number was 90, 90 across copying it across. That looks good. So I'll make that green. And then we've got the payroll taxes and wages which had a change like in the middle over here so payroll taxes and wages i'm going to go down and say all right payroll payroll so we started with the taxes so i'm going to copy it across and then i'll change it 972 for the taxes 972 and then it changed in the middle of the year so i'll fix that in a second wages were at the 1396 no not 13 hold on a sec taxes were 486 and then 6983 486 that is this should be 486 and then copy that across and then this one is going to be 9683 9683 for the wages 9683 9683 copy it across and then we changed it over here we said we're going to level up and give some raises or hire people in july so it's going to be 7682 in july for the wages so july i'm going to say that hold on a second did i do it wrong again it should be 6983 6983 sorry about that 6983 <laughs> okay copy that across okay and then we changed it in july 7682 July is here 7682 copy that across for the rest of the year and the related taxes at that point 535 535 we're going to copy that across 535 and copy it across okay so I think we got that one in place the totals are on the 618 6108 and the 8799 let's just check that 
we got the 6128 and 8799. I think that's right. So I'm going to go back on over. We can always double check it and fix it if there's any errors. So if I make any errors, it was totally intentional. So we can, we can demonstrate that. Now we're looking for the supplies. Let's look for the supplies. There they are here. I'm going to put that in January. So we're in January supplies. And that's going to be 350. 350 for the supplies. 350. Copy it across. So we'll copy it across. Hold on a second. It's frozen. There it goes. There it goes. Okay. And then telephone. Telephone is 385. So we're looking telephone, which is right here. Was it 385? Or I'm looking at the total. Yeah, 385. Did I change it? No, 385. 385. How many times how many times do I have to say it? That's what it is. Let's make that green. Utilities. We're going to go down to the utilities. 634. 634 on the utilities. There it is. Make it go down 68684. Utilities. Copy that across. So there's the 634, not 684. 634. 634. That's what it is. Okay, let's make that green. There's nothing on the gain. That's good. Depreciation 1236 on the depreciation. So we'll find the depreciation. Where did that go? They actually put it down here in other. I don't really like it down there personally, but we'll put it down here for now. We might have to change that. I'm not happy with that. Two, one, two, three, six, one, two, three, six. They might do that because it's a non-cash item to say it's not a cash flow item possibly, but still, that's not that's not normal accrual stuff. I don't think so. Whatever. So I'm gonna make that green. And then we've got the interest expense, interest expense, which I put into other. So interest expense is going to be down here. And so we're going to say that that's going to be a uh, three, three, four, three, three, four. We'll copy that across. And then finally, the last one we're going to have to do something different with. Is this the last one? Mis miscellaneous. Actually, no, the interest expense we changed, making it go down by the... 0.95 of the prior one. So we're gonna have to change this all the way across. So I'll do that here. Okay, so I've entered those in. The total comes out to the 3073. We increased it point the you know point we decreased it 0.9 for five percent of the prior period, 3074. So there's a rounding difference, and that's okay. And then then we finally have got the other miscellaneous, which also was put down here. So I'm gonna say that that's gonna be then the 75 across 75 and we'll just copy that across okay so now i'm going to save this i'm going to save this and we're going to want to of course double check it we could kind of check it out here we could look at our totals down below but it might be easier to just generate the report check it and then if there's a difference we'll, we'll go back into here and change it so we're going to close this out for now i think it might be easier to actually run a report we'll do that next time by going to the, the items up top, going into the reports on the left-hand side. I think it's easy to find, easiest to find them by just typing in budgeted reports. And then the budget overview is the standard report that we can kind of compare our numbers to most easily, closing up the hamburger. And so now we've got our, our budget report that we can check our numbers on. And if there's any errors or any problems with it, we can then go back into the data input for the budget, which is in the cog up top. And then we go into the budgeting and then we can choose that particular budget. Notice you can make multiple budgets. We can edit this particular budget and then make any adjustments we need to do. We'll continue with that next time. So if I have any errors here, if you say, hey, there's a problem, you missed it, something, we'll take a look at it next time. And in any case, it's really just kind of a practice problem to see what the data input process would be with our with our mock data. So bear with me if I've got any any issues or errors at this point in time. We'll continue with it next time.